aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. What the bloody hell are they, and how do we use them creatively? Well, in this video, I'm gonna try and explain them all to you in the most down-to-earth, basic way that I can. So the three main settings that we just outlined all fundamentally achieve the same goal of making your image brighter. But here's the catch. They all also have a side effect, two of which have a pretty cool side effect, one of them has a pretty shit side effect. And by increasing one of the settings, we're always gonna to have to compensate the other two to make sure we've got the right kind of amount of light hitting the sensor, thus giving us a good exposure. Let's start with aperture, because it's probably the most popular one, and it gives us that cool side effect of a nice shallow depth of field, or in layman's terms, a blurry background. I'll try and illustrate this for you with a photo of my mate Ian here where as you can see, when we raise the aperture, we're gonna increase how blurry that background is, giving us a bit more separation from the subject. Aperture is adjusted by opening or closing the blades on our lens, which will let less or more light in to hit the sensor. And by the way, when I say increase the aperture, I mean make the aperture bigger. Aperture is measured in f-stops, and just to mess with us, they like to use a small number for a large aperture, and a big number for a small aperture. Remember by opening the aperture nice and wide, we're gonna to have to compensate with the other settings to make sure we're getting the correct exposure. So as you can see on this example, we've opened up the aperture, which is gonna make the whole image brighter and give us that shallower depth of field. So what we're gonna to have to do now is speed up that shutter speed and reduce that ISO to control the amount of light that's coming in and balance that light coming in that's hitting the sensor to get that correct exposure. It's not all about fancy background blur though. For those of you that are looking to shoot landscapes, you're gonna to wanna to use those smaller apertures, which is actually denoted by the bigger F number, so that you've got a greater depth of field and more is in focus within your frame. Next up is shutter speed, which again, as well as it can make your image brighter, it also has the side effect of adding motion blur into your image. Shutter speed is literally how long the shutter is open for to let light in to hit the sensor. This is what it looks like at one four thousandth of a second. And this is how it looks at one twentieth of a second. Let me illustrate this on an example of an old Dolly 2CV down at the seaside. If I was to shoot this at a higher shutter speed, anything above kind of five hundredth of a second, thousandth of a second upwards, I'm gonna almost stop that car in time. Everything's gonna be sharp. We're gonna get no motion blur. We're gonna get a nice sharp shot. If, however, we wanna be a little bit more creative and introduce some motion blur in here, we'd look to drop that shutter speed. This means that anything that's moving while that shutter's open is gonna take on that motion blur. Anything that remains still is gonna remain sharp. This is a common effect that you'll see used in night photography to get those cool light trails behind cars. Again, depending on how low you're setting the shutter speed, we're gonna to need to compensate for that with the aperture and the ISO. We're gonna to have to stop down the aperture to stop light coming in, and we're gonna to have to drop that ISO level down as well, just so that we're balancing up the light that's hitting the sensor. Just remember, if you do start using low shutter speeds like this, you're probably gonna to wanna to put the camera on a tripod, unless it's got wicked IBIS in it, a tripod's really gonna help out in these situations. Finally, we have ISO, and this is the one that's got the shit side effect. So let's go back to that example of Ian, only this time it's dusk, we're losing light, so we're gonna to have to open up that aperture nice and wide to let as much light in. We're gonna to have to drop down that shutter speed, again, to let more light in. If at this point the image is still underexposed, this is where we've got to bite the bullet and raise that ISO up. What that's gonna do is make your camera's sensor more sensitive to light, which kind of sounds great, but the side effect of that is that it's gonna introduce noise into the image. It's not the end of the world. Using lower ISOs is not too bad generally. Pushing them too far though is gonna make your image break apart. This unfortunately is where better camera bodies and full frame sensors excel and it kind of is one of those points where gear does make a bit of a difference. So just to summarize those side effects again, aperture, good. We can use that to creatively add a bit of a shallow depth of field to our images. Shutter speed, good. We can get some cool motion blur going on. ISO, pretty shit because we're gonna introduce noise into the image. Anyway, I hope all of that has been useful. I didn't wanna kind of try and give two specific camera settings for those examples. I just wanted to give you guys more of an overview so you just know what these settings do and how you can use them to start becoming a bit more creative and a bit more experimental. Like and subscribe and all that stuff, that'd be really appreciated. And I'll leave a couple of other videos around here somewhere, one of which is how to set up your camera manually to take portraits. 
and the other is a few tips on composition. Thanks again and I'll see you soon.